Hello everybody and welcome to Heartlight Vedic Astrology. And uh, today's talk I was going to cover the tenth house or tenth bhava symbolism. And this is from a Vedic astrology or Jyotish perspective, so keep that in mind. So if you're new to Vic Vedic astrology or Jyotish or my videos, um, all of my teaching videos on the subject of my concepts playlist, they can all be found there. And wherever you see a double asterisk in one of my talks, it means I have a teaching video on that topic if you'd like to learn more. Um, I've uh, analyzed a bunch of famous birth charts on the channel, um, and to find them, uh, you could look at this uh, birth chart archive list 2024 video where I list all the charts I've analyzed and the videos you can find them in. And um, I'll mention just uh, in today's uh, video uh, a couple of them if you want to go search them out um, to really look at them in depth. Um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's chart, uh, who is the author of the Sherlock Holmes series. Um, his chart I analyzed in the Planetary Transits Go Chara for May 2024 video. Also mentioned Albert Einstein um, and uh, his birth chart I looked at a little bit in the Buddha Ditcha Yoga, the intelligence combination video, if you want to look at those charts more than what I talk about briefly here. Um, other videos, excuse me, other videos to watch uh, before this one. Uh, potentially uh, the North, South, and East Indian style charts. I do cover Western style charts in that video as well, but it's not part of the title. Introduction to Navigating a Birth Chart. Introduction to the Constellations or Rashis. Constellation or Rashi categories. Um, then I have a whole playlist on planets or Grahas. And I would specifically look at my Symbolism of Saturn or Shani um, video for today's talk. And then also for more videos like this, I have a whole... Uh, Moses Baba playlist. Uh, I've got to do the 11th or 12th house still, but we're almost at the end here. And uh, if you don't know the houses and Babas, if you're new to all of it, you might start with the Lugna, also known as the Ascendant Rising Sign or First House video. All right. Okay, so the 10th house, um, the 10th house is also known as the Karma Stein. So Karma means action, Stein means house. So this is the house of action. Um, the tenth house in the natural zodiac. So the natural zodiac is when you um, put the first constellation of Aries in the first house, which um, is essentially what I've done here in the chart that you see to the right. Um, uh, this is a North Indian style chart, and so the first house is that middle diamond at the top with the one in it. Now the one is in the corner, in the bottom corner there, not because it's the first house, but because that's the first constellation. So when you have the one uh, in the top square in North Indian style chart, that means Aries, the first constellation, is in the first house. Um, so uh, where was I? Okay, so anyway, in the 10th tenth, uh, tenth house of the natural zodiac, um, this would be ruled by the sign or constellation of Capricorn, also known as Makara in Sanskrit. And Capricorn is ruled by the planet Saturn or Shani in Sanskrit. Now, Capricorn is a movable Earth sign. So, movable means a lot of activity, and Earth means Earth, you know, a very practical um, material type of uh, energy. And so, with movable Earth, this is like a building, you know, putting Earth down, putting Earth down over and over again. So, this is a, almost like a building type of energy in this 10th house. Okay. So, um, the 10th house is also known as an artistana. So, arta means wealth or material wealth. And so the primary motivation of somebody who has a strong 10th house or maybe the ruling planet of the chart has gone to the 10th house, their primary motivation would be the material, living in the material world, like making money, building a family, creating a house or cars and kind of accumulating things on that level. Um, uh, the thing though is that um, of the artistanas, and there are several, um, the tenth house is the highest level of Arta, so the highest level of material building. So that's why, as you'll see, as we get into the more details of the symbolism here, you see here like um, like honors and awards and things like that, because typically when people have achieved that level of success in their in their profession, in their work, which are the things that the tenth house re represent, um, that they will be known for that see their name in a paper and they'll get awards and they'll develop prestige because of the work that they do. Okay, so the 10th house is a Kendra. The Kendras are the four houses in the middle, um, first, fourth, seventh, and 10th house. 
Now the Kendras are important because these are the sort of core energies of a person. The other thing is the 10th house is an Upachaya. Uh, so an Upachaya house is one where improvement is seen over time. And so since the 10th house is the karmastana of action, daily action, especially that which is um, obvious and overt, um, this is how you, this is one of the main ways that you start to shift your karma, especially if you're, um, you know, working in above board and, uh, you know, by minded ways. Okay. Uh, and since most people spend most of their time uh, working, um, then the way that they go about that work is, is very important for their overall wellness, well-being, and, you know, uh, karma development, positive karma development. In terms of health, uh, the 10th house is related to knees, and also because it's uh, related to knees and, you know, the legs generally, um, gait. So if somebody has um, positive gait or maybe a, dis a disabled type of gait, uh, that might be seen here. Also, in general, um, because we're talking about uh, Shani, uh, Saturn, and Capricorn, you know, Earth sign, we're talking about very practical, uh, material type of, of parts of the body, um, you know, more than like the nervous system, which is mercurial, uh, typically, um, you know, Capricorn is a very earthly sign. So the things that you can see and feel, um, very tangible type parts of the body, not like the mind or emotions, you know, which are more, you know, abstract, I would say. Um, so other things related to the 10th house, again, very like literally concrete, as concrete as it gets in the body. So like the skeleton, the general structure, posture, arthritis, so joints, um, and maybe starting to get into like muscles, that sort of stuff. But I would see more of the like, you know, joints and bones and, you know, jaw, that sort of thing. Um, overall, backbone. Because the backbone, too, is also the central axis for the whole skeleton. Yeah. Um, on, on the list that I have, I do, and I put this in parentheses, is sleep. Um, I've never used the 10th house to assess sleep. I usually use the 12th house for sleep. Um, but it's on the list, so I'm adding it here. But again, I don't use it for sleep. Uh, maybe other people do. Um, then people related to the 10th house, so elders, potentially. Um... Because these are the people who are the most um, kind of uh, usually prestigious, especially in traditional society, uh, prestigious in the family. Um, and kind of the backbone of the family. Uh, you could see it that way. Um, father is assessed here. Um, some people do that. Um, I tend to use the ninth house for father. Uh, that's how I was taught, and that seems to work pretty well. Um, some astrologers do use the 10th house for father, or I think in the past it was the 10th house was more used for father. But again, the, the, I think in a lot of cultures, because the father was seen as the head of the family. Um, and I think that that has shifted and drifted over time as, as cultures have shifted away from more traditional structures of family. Um, adopt a child can be seen here, um, potentially. I don't typically use it for uh, adopt a child, but some people might. Um, usually I use the sixth house uh, for adopt a child because the sixth house is um, uh, non-blood related relatives. Um, but since the sixth, um, sorry, since um, the tenth house is fifth from the sixth, so fifth is like the, the fifth house uh, for anybody is considered to be the house representing children. It's children of those people who are not blood related. So again, that's a little bit convoluted for me. Uh, usually I use the sixth house, but you know, people might do this. Um, mother can also be seen here. I've never assessed, <laughs> I've never used the tenth house to assess mother, but some people do because it's a reflection of the fourth house. I mean, if I used uh, the tenth house to assess mother, I would look at it as like partner of mother. So it would get me back to father. Um, or like, you know, if mother was interested in, uh, independent business or business partners and that sort of thing, I would just take it as a seventh house for mom, but I wouldn't use it for, you know, I would use it for that part of mom's life, but not mom not herself. Um, and then I also have on the list here, doctor. Now, the reason why doctor might be here 
is as you'll see as we get into more work and authority and career related stuff to the 10th house, uh, the 10th house is related to classic professions such as doctor, lawyer, architect, engineer, accountant, you know, kind of the more uh, usually tried and true, uh, steady, um, and prestigious, I would say as well. Typically people who have these uh, designations are kind of, you know, uh, I'm not sure why, but, you know, sometimes they're seen as like, you know, kind of a higher class and profession at least. Um, so maybe that's why doctor is here, but I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't look to the 10th house uh, to assess like one's own doctor. Like if we were looking at this chart for as a person's chart and I wanted to know, like if they were uh, doing some medical stuff and I wanted to know uh, what was potentially coming from the doctor of the person, I would be looking more at the fifth house of counseling and advising and, and I would be assessing that. So anyway, again, you'll see a lot of parentheses on this list um, because, again, I think the 10th house has shifted quite a bit over time. Um, maybe, maybe that's why, because, again, a lot of the things that were on the list that I have, I don't actually use. And I haven't seen other people use, but, you know, my experience may be limited. So um, then we get into a whole category of work and authority. Now, this, I think, is mostly true, um, you know, business, commerce, profession, fame. Because again, most people are famous because of their profession, um, you know. And in terms of business, this is like more like um, corporate type business, but not one that one owns itself, not where you're the proprietor or owner or founder, because that would be more the seventh house. So this is more classic nine to five type job stuff. And if you, you know, work your way up the ladder, you know, the 10th house is very much a work your way up the ladder type of house because of this, you know, shunny, long-term, you know, nerds of the grindstone. But again, this is shifting quite a bit because it used to be even like, uh, not my generation, I think my generation shifted, but the generation before mine, it used to people, people got one job and they stayed in that one job or that one uh, corporation or business uh, for their whole life. So they spent 30 years working in one place. And it wears now, it's almost seen as a stigma to work in one place for that long. So, you know, people are changing jobs every couple of years or so. So, you know, that's changed, right? Um, but uh, work and authority. So I do see, uh, you know, work here, uh, commerce, profession, fame, good and bad deeds. Because again, this is uh, the 10th house also relates to time of high noon. So the middle of the day. Things that you tend to see people do during the middle of the day, which is, you know, different kinds of work, even if it's in the home, like a housewife or house husband or that sort of thing. Um, that's what they spend their daylight hours doing. Um, but how are they going about these things? Because again, every time that they, um, if they approach their work, if they approach their colleagues with high mind and integrity, then that will produce more good karma. But if they're cutting corners and they're trying to you know, um, I don't know, deceive people or, you know, squeeze what they can out of people, then all that karma will come back to them in a negative way, potentially. Okay, but you can also see here, like, honors, great achievements. So people who get awards, people who get, like, um, in the paper, like, oh, you know, best hair salon in the in the town and, the, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, when they're starting to get um, uh, notoriety, you know, positive uh, notation from people and, you know, they're seen in a positive way. So also, you know, prestige and rank uh, that could be seen there. Also asceticism. So this could be, for example, um, when I see typically see something like K2 in the 10th house, it might be somebody who's actually um, walked away from the kind of nine to five life or nine to five jobs, that kind of thing. So if the 10th house is afflicted, you might see the opposite where people are just like, you know, I don't really want to uh, follow the tried and true, you know, work my way up the ladder type of uh, job or lifestyle. I want to do my own thing, you know, then they might have a really strong seventh house or they alternatively, they might be like um, kind of an artisan uh, kind of craftsman type in which their third house would be very strong. Or the other thing is that if they're not working in a you know, private company, 
they might decide that they want to, um, you know, work their way up the government ladder, which in case, in that case would be the ninth house. Now I do have on here also after asceticism, you see government here. I don't typically use the 10th house as government by itself. I typically use the 9th house, and that works pretty well from all that I've seen and done. Um, but there can be people who have, for example, the 10th house lord going to the 9th house, or the 9th house lord going to the 10th house, or parivartana, exchange of houses between the 10th and the 9th. When you start to see that kind of stuff, then I would see, like, okay, this person's, like, you know, more potentially uh, interested or involved in government-related activities. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they work in the government, like, okay, I work, I you know, have a job with the Department of Revenue or something like that. Um, what it might mean is that whatever, like, maybe they work in a private company, but a private company um, derives part of its funding from the government. Like maybe uh, it's um, outsourcing, like the, I think the, I think that's, I'm not sure, but I think like when they're building the roads and stuff like this um, and the government, you know, is plunking down money, what they're doing though is that um, part of it per, for part of the highways and stuff like that is that they're outsourcing that to private companies and they get bids from different companies to uh, supply the workers and supplies and all that kind of stuff because um, I think the Department of Transportation, I don't know if the Department of Transportation has that much leeway, I couldn't be totally wrong in terms of how much flux and flow, um, you know, in terms of growth of workers and that sort of thing. It, again, I think uh, some of that when there's a lot of money that can be spent on developing uh, highways, I think the government tends to kind of outsource some of that to private companies to get the work done. Anyway, um, so command, high and low position. Again, this gets back to the idea of prestige, rank, theme. You, you know, if the 10th house is very afflicted, um, this could be somebody who's uh, negatively known for their profession. Maybe they're considered a scoundrel or a cheat or something like that in the profession, and then they're kind of ousted from any positive status. Kingdoms here, well, this won't be for most of us, clearly, but um, for some people, like actually, if you look at um, Prince Charles's charts, uh, which I analyzed in the last Eclipse video that I did back in April, um, I looked at his chart, and he has um, Mars in Aries, if I remember correctly, um, in the 10th house. And so, and I believe Mars was on Ashwini in the first, in the 10th house. So, you know, that's uh, Mars is a leadership planet. It's an innovative planet. It's also a competitive planet. And he was also interested in, you know, horses and polo, playing polo and things like that. So Ashwini is a nakshatra or lunar mansion uh, related to uh, or place in the sky where the moon resides. So it shifts every night um, uh, related to the Kamara twins who ride around on horses. <laughs> um, but especially Mars being in its own sign is a very strong indication for a very strong 10th house, which he, he's known for his career of being, you know, now king of England, right? Or the United Kingdom. So that works on his chart. Um, you know, in terms of the kingdom, <laughs> um, status, uh, trade, potentially, uh, you know, again, tradesmen, like, um, sometimes plumbing, sometimes like electricians, sometimes artisans, like woodworkers and stuff. Sometimes that's more of like a third house thing. So I think it would depend on the kind of trade. Um, also debts, uh, but debts, usually again, we look at the sixth house and the eighth house for debts short and long-term debts. Debts can be potentially because somebody's unemployed. So if they have, again, an afflicted 10th house. Uh, vehicles, I don't tend to assess vehicles here, but it's on my list. So um, this might be, be because the 10th house reflects the 4th house, and the 4th house is where I generally assess vehicles. And then sports, which uh, to me seemed fairly random. Um, uh, uh, maybe sports. If there were sports here, I would expect to see uh, Mars for sure and probably Saturn. Because usually when I see Mars and Saturn together, I, that usually represents like an athlete and uh, sometimes an engineer. Mars is usually uh, very prominent in people who are interested in sports. Um, but why the 10th house specifically sports, I don't know. That's why it's in parentheses. Then we get on to Earth and atmosphere. 
So because the 10th house is kind of the highest uh, level here um, in the chart, um, we do see sky. This represents the sky. And um, associated with that, I haven't done this, but I don't tend to use these charts for weather predictions. Uh, maybe other people do. And if they do it, maybe they use the 10th house for rain and drought because, you know, things, you know, the precipitation coming from the sky. Um, agriculture uh, is also assessed here, I guess, by some people. I tend to use the fourth house because that's the obvious for, uh, fourth house indication. But maybe because, again, it's a um, reflection of the fourth, potentially. Um, the other thing is that agriculture is dependent on, you know, rain cycles in the sky and the weather. So maybe... Uh, again, it was a little bit vague to me as to why I don't, you know, again, I don't typically, you know, assess things like that. So I don't have any experience with that, but maybe. And then science generally. Now, so this, this again, in my mind is, um, I don't know, a bit of a stretch. <laughs> um, you know, maybe I tend to, I tend to see a lot of scientists who have uh, really strong second houses and third houses because, um, those are related to technology and also eighth houses, potentially the eighth house, because there's a lot of research involved there. Maybe ninth house, if there's like government grants involved in research. Um, so again, I don't know, for me, science, 10th house, that's not a natural place where I would go to, but maybe other people do it differently. Um, and then other, other things, kind of a miscellaneous category here, foreign countries. Which again, to me, is kind of a strange, uh, you know, concept here. But it could be seen as the again a reflection of the fourth, meaning if the fourth house represents home, then the farthest place away from home, the farthest bhava house from the fourth, is going to be the tenth. Now, again, just because it's on the list, I don't know that I would do it. Maybe I should, but I tend to use like the twelfth house is a very obvious one. The ninth house is long distance travel. I don't know. I, I, it would be, I don't know, maybe I'm just in the habit of, of looking at the chart certain ways, and maybe I would be a better astrologer if I use these things. But um, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, again, I'm just giving you the stuff that's on uh, my list so that you can, you know, again, you can look at different charts and see for yourself uh, what you agree with and what works for you and what seems to be consistent through different charts. Um, again, as I think I mentioned, the 10th house is also related to activities during the day, so things that are overt and obvious. Whereas, for example, um, somebody has a lot of placements in the 4th house, the 4th house is really more midnight, so the middle of the night when, you know, uh, usually people are in their own homes or they're sleeping or, you know, kind of not out and about in a public way. So um, the 10th house is more of a kind of a public activity type house. Then if we're looking at careers, as I mentioned, nine to five jobs, you know, kind of more of the corporate corporate um, lifestyle type. Um, and administrators, potentially, so managers, supervisors, executives. And then again, if there's ties uh, to the ninth house, as I mentioned, the tenth lord going to the ninth, or ninth lord going to the tenth, or a party of arts and exchange of houses, um, this might involve uh, government. Uh, classic professions such as doctor, lawyer, architect, engineer, accountant, because again, these are tried and true, um, you know, kind of, um, especially in traditional societies, a lot of uh, parents tend to encourage their uh, children to move in these directions because there's steadiness here, typically, more so than, you know, becoming an artist or a you know, singer or something like that, especially if um, you know, the family has seen uh, financial difficulties in the past. Um, so these types of careers uh, tend to always have business. You know, there's always uh, like some place you can go to get a job. Um, so it's a very, um, there's a lot of practicality in choosing these careers potentially. Although it doesn't always um, work out, right? Like, uh, who did I look at? Sir Arthur Con Conan Doyle's chart, who was the uh, writer of the uh, Sherlock Holmes series. He was a doctor who his private business failed, and so he ended up becoming an author writer instead. Um, so you never know. I mean, just because you go, go down that road doesn't mean it's going to work out for you. Um, and then Sky Space, as uh, I mentioned, 
So like astronomers, aeronautical engineers, meteorologists, astrophysicists, actually in my, um, uh, excuse me, Buddha Ditya Yoga. So that's a, a planetary combination for intelligence. That video, one of the charts I looked at was um, Albert Einstein. And he has a Pravraja Yoga in the 10th house. So uh, Pravraja Yoga is when you have uh, multiple planets in a house and it's considered a life focus. And you can see for him, being in the 10th house, he was an astrophysicist and he was involved in the government. Um, sort of indirectly, but a lot of his funding came from the government, and he advised the government, um, and he was famous. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in his chart, um, a lot of that works really well. Okay, so that's a 10th house. Uh, so as always, I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate you stopping by and listening to one of my talks, and all the other ways that you uh, support my work in the channel, uh, subscribing to uh, the channel and liking videos and leaving comments, asking questions and uh, um, offering generous donations. You know, all of that is appreciated. All of my teaching videos on the subject of Vedic Astrology are my concepts playlist. They can all be found there. And then for uh, birth chart, famous birth charts, you can look at my birth chart archival list 2024 video for a list of all the birth charts I've uh, analyzed on the channel. If you're interested in a personal birth chart reading, I offer them live on Zoom and as pre-recorded video. If that's of interest, you can email heartlightastro at yahoo.com. And uh, I have another YouTube channel, Natural Medicine, where I talk about other Vedic arts, such as Ayurveda, traditional Indian medicine and yoga, as well as other alternatives in natural medicine, such as homeopathy and naturopathic medicine. The name of that channel is called Nature Source Care. <clears throat> so that's out there, too, if that's helpful to you. So as always, I hope you found this talk helpful, useful, and interesting to you as you learn to navigate the energy cycles of your own life. So until the next one, take care. Namaste.